This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. I think we can finally put to rest one of the more strange rumors that have been floating around since Francis allowed Car Cardinal Arthur Roach to release his rescript document repeating what Traditionis Custoda said and then closing the perceived legal loopholes in the document that is since its release led to scores of dioceses closing up their Latin Mass offerings. That, and that rumor is this, that somehow Cardinal Roach had somehow lost the favor of Francis and that Francis doesn't like Cardinal Roach anymore. We have news that Cardinal Roach has in fact been promoted by Francis, which actually increases Roach's papability for the next conclave. Being papabile means a cardinal at a conclave has a chance to be chosen by his peers to be the next pope. Every cardinal has a chance, even a remote chance, but one of the factors that often goes into choosing a man to be pope is the amount of work he's done in the Roman Curia. While Roach has always had only a remote chance of becoming pope, his chances just went up, even if only a little, because Francis just rewarded Roach with a promotion for a job well done. In fact, this move is highly symbolic. According to a post on Twitter by LifeSite News journalist Michael Haynes, Cardinal Roach has been promoted to join the Select Pontifical Commission for Vatican City State. That select commission governs Vatican City, meaning, meaning Cardinal Roach has gotten a promotion to a job post that gives him governing experience in the church, which I'm sure he's hoping goes better than his disastrous time running the Diocese of Leeds in the United Kingdom did. As Mr. Haynes stated on Twitter about this, quote, While arguments are made that Roach has somehow lost the favor of at Pontifex, meaning Francis, such a position does not seem to have considerable evidence supporting it, end quote. And why would Roach lose the favor of Francis? He's done quite literally everything Francis has asked of him, leading to the suppression of countless apostolic masses in pretty much every diocese in the Western world. In the days after Roach's rescript document was released on Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday, by the way, which is a symbolically important day, numerous dioceses effectively announced pretty much immediately or within a month the closure of all but one diocesan Latin mass locations, cons consolidating everything to one or two locations in a diocese, sending faithful parishioners to the most remote parts of the diocese to attend a mass somewhere in a basement or some specially designated chapel that's not a parish somewhere, leaving most to have to drive long distances to attend the same liturgy all the saints and doctors of the church attended. This is happening despite many canonists pointing out that this latest document actually violates canon law, at least according to their argument. You see, Canon 87 of the Code of Canon Law permits bishops to ignore certain legal declarations from Rome, and even from the Pope himself if such actions would harm the faith in the particular diocese in question, under certain conditions. Here's what Canon 87 actually says, quote, whenever he judges that it contributes to their spiritual good, is able to dispense the faithful from universal and particular disciplinary laws issued for his territory or his subjects by the supreme authority of the church. He is not able to dispense, however, from procedural or penal laws, nor from those whose dispensation is, spe is specially reserved to the apostolic see or some other authority. If recourse to the Holy See is difficult and, at the same time, there is danger of grave harm in delay, any ordinary is able to dispense from these same laws even if dispensation is reserved to the Holy See, provided that it concerns a dispensation which the Holy See is accustomed to grant under the same circumstances, without prejudice to the prescript of Canon 291. End, end quote. So the crux of the argument in more plain language is in the second point, where the ability to ignore actions by Rome is permissible only if the Holy See would actually permit dispensation under essentially normal circumstances. Rome is saying in Roach's latest document that in fact that loophole doesn't apply to this situation, that all these caveats that limit it to Rome are, apply here, thus leading to countless Latin masses being canceled in the church in those dioceses where quietly traditionis custodis had been ignored, with more announcements seeming to come every single day. You should go take a look at the Latin Mass Locator website right now. It's a mess. But to pull this off, Cardinal Roach needed to apply a fix to what has essentially been seen as a sloppy document. That was Traditionis Custodis. This and the potentially illegal nature of what Cardinal Roach has done with Francis's blessing, and probably at Francis's order, is explained by Father Gerald Murray in this excerpt from an article by Dion Montagna at the Catholic Herald. Quote, 
In comments to the Catholic Herald before the rescript was issued, Father Murray noted that Cardinal Roach, quote, seems to presume that the diocesan bishop lacks the power to dispense from this rule, which power is granted to him by Canon 87, subsection 1, because he seems to presume that such dispensation has been reserved to the Holy See. The problem with this claim, Father Murray said, is that nowhere does Traditionis Custodis state that dispensation from the prohibition of allowing the use of a parish church is reserved to the Holy See. He continued, the provisions of Canon 87, subsection 1, that permit the diocesan bishop, for reasons of spiritual welfare, to dispense from disciplinary universal laws and those particular laws made by the supreme ecclesiastical authority for his territory or his subjects, remain in place unless the Pope specifically reserves such dispensation to himself or to some other authority. No such reservation is stated in Traditionis Custodis, nor in the responsa. Father Murray also explained that, quote, for a newly ordained priest to obtain authorization from his bishop to celebrate the traditional Latin Mass, the promulgated Italian text of Traditionis Custodis states that the bishop is simply required to, quote, consult with the Holy See. The later official Latin translation of Traditionis Custodis, whose existence was unknown until Cardinal Roach issued the responsa, changed the wording to say that the bishop must ask for permission from the Holy See to give such an authorization. This substantive change in law carried out through an unannounced changing of the original wording when producing a translation is most irregular, the canonist observed noting that the English, Italian, and Spanish versions of Traditionis Custodis on the Holy See website still do not include the change found in the Latin version. Father Murray said, quote, This confusion and inconsistency can give rise to a doubt that this change provision enjoys legal force. An apostolic letter is not subject to rewriting by a translator unless the change is specifically authorized and promulgated by the Pope. There is no evidence that this occurred in the case of the Latin translation. Other canonists have made similar arguments. To overcome his opposition and force ahead in laying waste to the church's ancient rites, Cardinal Roach needed to convince Pope Francis to put into legislation what he had been trying to enforce without proper canonical backing, hence the rescript. End quote. Yeah, the document was sloppily written. There were different versions in different languages with some requirements listed in some versions, but not in others. And the end result of this rescript has been nothing short of a near total suppression of the traditional mass at the diocesan level. Whether this is the final act on the subject by Francis or not is hotly debated. But Roach is certainly not getting punished for this, even if it required what is being argued are extra legal measures to achieve the goal of forcing the typical faithful Catholic to attend a mass that he or she has very serious concerns with, which the laws of the church had previously protected such decisions of personal conscience against. This document achieves that with a requirement often ignored. Every bishop who seeks to get a dispensation from Rome to keep more than the permitted amount of mass offerings going must show how many people attend the traditional mass at the requested location and what steps the bishop is taking to re-educate those faithful into accepting the new mass. The entire point of Traditionis Custodis was to begin the process of eliminating the apostolic mass entirely and getting the laity to be comfortable attending the approved clown masses. And I say approved when describing clown masses because liturgical abuse is rampant in the church, and Francis has done nothing to curb it in the slightest. But why would he try to fix those bad masses that might be invalid, given the evil way that they're offered? This is about the persecution of the laity by Rome. Father Gerald Murray goes on in that article saying as much, and it's a persecution built off of lies, specifically the lie that the bishops were not happy with Benedict XVI's Samorum Pontificum. I mean, I'm sure a few weren't happy, but not the vast majority, as was claimed by Rome. Quote, Appearing on the world over on Thursday, the 23rd of February, Father Murray summed up the situation, saying, It's a persecution of Latin mass Catholics, plain and simple, and it can't be justified by saying this is going to help promote the mission of the church. This is damaging the church. One question that arises is how the dicastery will enforce the rescript, given its severely limited resources. Will Cardinal Roach himself enter house after house to banish traditional Catholics from their spiritual home. Reports have it that the prefect has sought an apostolic constitution with still more sweeping measures against the traditional Roman rite. 
Whether this recent act is a more limited response to this alleged request or a foretaste of more to come, only time will tell. But another and perhaps more pressing question is why Cardinal Roach needs to exert such pressure on diocesan bishops when the majority were, supposedly, unhappy with the application of Benedict XVI's Samorum Pontificum. Francis said in Traditionis Custodis that, quote, the wishes expressed by the episcopate in a consultation of bishops carried out in 2020 by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith called for a crackdown on the traditional Latin liturgy. And in his accompanying letter to the Motu Proprio, he said that he was, quote, responding to their requests. The Vatican has never disclosed the results of this consultation, something which, quote, remained mysterious even to Pope Emeritus Benedict himself. Extensive leaks of the 2020 consultation have appeared, however, and seem to tell a rather different story about Episcopal reaction to Benedict XVI's 2007 motu proprio, with many testimonies to its fruitfulness and the peace it achieved. In fact, they revealed that the message from the majority of bishops was to continue with a prudent and careful application of Samorum Pontificum, end quote. So yes, Cardinal Roach has been given a promotion, and this promotion is in addition to his duty smashing the liturgy for Francis, an act done built on a tower of lies. Rumors abound that Roach is also hard at work on a revision of the new mass that would essentially undo the work of Benedict XVI that ended most talk of the new mass being invalid. If you're not familiar with what that was, until the papacy of Benedict XVI, there was a question as to whether the words of consecration in the new mass as promulgated by Paul VI were valid due to how the consecratory act was worded. It was a very high-level theological debate. <laughs> Benedict issued a revision of the new mass that fixed the particular concern. Word is that Rome is looking to revisit the question, and these rumors have been on the money so far when it comes to Roach's efforts to undermine the liturgy of the church. So, folks, stay tuned, because as I've said constantly, Rome isn't only going after those mean trads. They're going after everyone with the faith to build their new church. The smashing of the traditional mass is just part of the same process. The synod on synodality is trying to accomplish something this, in this larger process, and just the traditional mass being suppressed is part of that. But I have to ask you, what do you think about this? Is Roach getting a promotion for a job well done? Do you think the rumors that he's been punished by Rome for some mysterious reasons are true? Do you think he's sort of like an anti-Benedict XVI, like the mirror image, like an evil version of Benedict XVI? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.